Well, hi, everybody. Will Davis Jr. here with 40 Conversations about prayer. This is number 19. We're almost halfway done. Crazy. Thanks, as always, for joining in. Please send your cards, comments, questions, complaints. You can't send cards unless they're e-cards to Senior Pastor SR Pastor at acfellowship.org. Okay, today, just a story. Just want to tell you a story about the power of prayer. I'm calling this a dangerous prayer. This is one of those be careful what you pray for things, and it's it's just a great story. So this is back in the um, late 80s. That's how long ago this was. That'd be the 1980s. Um, I was pastoring a church, and I was driving to work praying, and I realized, you know, I hadn't shared my faith in a while. Um, I'm a pastor. I'm meeting with folks. I'm writing sermons. I'm preaching, but I haven't just had a one-on-one evangelism encounter in a minute. So, Lord, um, I ask you to bring somebody in my life that I can talk to. Okay? Pray that in Jesus' name. So, I did. And when I got to the office, which is like two minutes later, one of the kids in our church who rode a motorcycle, he was a Lanier High School student, troubled kid, had a motorcycle that he rode to church every day. I mean, excuse me, rode to school every day. And it was broken down in our parking lot. He said, Pastor, I'm stuck. Can you please take me to school? He's in a program for troubled and... Um, disciplined kids, kids being disciplined, and he couldn't afford to be late, and he already was. And so he said, can you get me to school? I said, sure. So we hopped in the car, I drove him over to, to what was then Lanier High School, and walked him to the class, and went to the teacher and said, hey, I'm so sorry, legitimate excuse, his bike broke down, and I'm here getting him to class on time. And she said, no worries, thanks. And I started walking out, and one of the other kids in the classroom said, what are you, his probation officer? There's about 10 kids in the room, maybe 12. Rough crowd. Are you his probation officer? And I said, no, actually I'm his pastor. And they all just started laughing. Like, his, this kid would never have a pastor. And he said, what do you guys believe anyway? And I remember when I prayed literally 30 minutes before. So I looked at the teacher, public school, looked at the teacher, and she said, like, give me a look, like, go for it. It wasn't a verbal go for it, but she didn't stop me. So I sat down on a desk in front of the class and said, what do you want to know? And for the next 20 minutes, um, I talked to those, you know, special, specially challenged, troubled kids in Lanier High School about Jesus. And I answered their questions. And I talked to them about the Bible. And I talked to them about prayer. And I talked to them about the Holy Spirit. And I talked to them about grace and mercy and forgiveness and how Jesus died to set us free. And I prayed 30 minutes before for God to give me a chance to share my faith. That's a dangerous prayer. And he did it. Now I had to be open to the nudge. If I'd been busy and not willing to take that kid to school, then you know I would have missed the chance. But I will always remember talking to those kids at Lanier because God teed it up for me just as a result of a simple prayer. So my friend Chris Tapkin in our prayer ministry always talks about connecting the dots. You pray and then something happens over here, or you pray and something, or you make a decision for Christ and something happens over here, or this, and you get baptized and something happens here. Connect those dots. We do not live, there are not barriers in the spiritual realm. We, we, we pray and stuff happens. We make decisions, we obey, and there's a ripple effect. We disobey and there's a ripple effect. And I need you to learn to connect those dots. Because when you connect the dots, you'll begin to see the power of God. I connected the dots. Oh, I had just prayed a prayer. And here I am in front of a bunch of students in Lanier, which if I, if I had written a letter and said, can I come talk to the kids about Jesus? They'd said no. <laughs> but in this setting, it just happened because God did it. Are you willing to pray prayers and then look for the answers? We talked about seeking a couple of days ago. If you seek, he's going to open the door for you. So why don't you pray a dangerous prayer today and see what happens. Lord, thanks for the time. Bless my friends today. In Jesus' name, help us to pray and connect the dots. We love you. Amen. See you tomorrow.